Hi there, YouTubers out there in YouTube land. Uh, my name is Dave, and this is an unboxing and review of a setup of a uh, Canvas Camp Tent that I bought. It's called a Sibley 500 Ultimate Pro Tech. The first box I'm going to open up here is the one I got from Belgium. I ordered some extras uh, with the tent just for the heck of it. So I sent that from Belgium by uh, UPS. So that wasn't bad. It came in about five days, so I can't really complain about that. The other two packages I'll show you afterwards are the poles that came with the tent and then the tent itself in a very large duffel bag. It weighs lots, but I'll, you know, I'll get the specs for you here in a bit. We'll go through that later. First thing you see there, that's a stove jack. It lets you put the tent or put the uh, stove pipe for your exhaust out through the tent itself. Instead of being the square cloth ones you sew in, this thing's a metal bracket you put on. Those little bag in front that I just put down is uh, two coat racks I bought for the tent, so you can hang your jacket and side off the center pole. So I figured, yeah, what the heck, I need it. What I'm unwrapping now is a stove mat. So when your stove goes in the tent, you've got to have a mat down there to keep embers from burning a hole in your floor. So I bought their version. It's called a Frontier Stove Mat. That front circle is where the front leg goes, and there's two legs at the back, so it's only got three, but mine's got four, so... I'll show you later how it looks. It's just a fireproof floor for embers coming out of your tent and stuff. So if you, you know, have your stove going and, you know, you embers fall out while you're changing logs or whatever, it won't burn a hole through your floor or your tent, which would be a bad thing. Oh, the tent on it is bomber. I had a look at it already. You'll see it later on in the video here. It's, it's totally sweet. This thing I'm opening up here now is a chandelier because God knows you need to have a chandelier to make it romantic and elegant. Nah, the warden saw it and wanted it. She wants to go glamping. I'm like, yeah, no, it's just a tent for camping. Basically, it's a hot tent for winter camping. That's what I bought it for. So I'm opening up the chandelier thing now. You get, they sent me one extra colored glass holder. You got me, I don't know why, but that's the, in the box behind there. It has the other 12 uh, little, uh, you know, candle tea light holders in it. So I figured, you know, what the heck? So we'll get the chandelier. They have double chandeliers and singles. I just bought basically the stove jack as an extra, the mat for the floor, the chandelier to put up to keep the warden happy. And then, you know, the two coat, coat racks to hang up jackets and stuff. But I, I'll do a later video showing you usability of the tent and how well it works and what's in it, all that kind of stuff. Because I just, this is just an unboxing video showing what came in the box the day I got it. So what you see is what I saw the very first time I saw it. So I'm, you know, opening up all the bits and seeing what came in what box. I couldn't figure out why I had, they, the one box came from UPS, the other two came from FedEx. Don't ask me why. It's kind of weird, but, you know, who am I to argue? So that's after I opened up the first initial box from Canvas Camp. You'll see there the stove jack, the two coat racks, a little funky chandelier, and then you got my stove mat, which is the key one for the embers on the ground. So that's what I got in that first box. Very exciting. The next thing I got uh, was a very long skinny box. I'm going to go, oh, let me guess, poles? So yeah, this is the poles that came with the tent from Canvas Camp. That came from uh, FedEx on a separate order. I think it shipped out of the States. I'm not sure, but that's what it looks like it came from. So I said, all right, fair enough. So there you go, putting up the full box. Uh, there, these are, uh, the, when I bought the model of tent, this is the Sibley 500 Ultimate Pro Tech. So it's one tent down from the top one they make. Uh, the only difference being this one hasn't got the as heavy a fire, fireproof treating coating on it that their top of the line tent has. So I mean, they go from, you know, 400 euros, 500 euros, 600 euros, you know, all the way up. So the bag is nothing too hot. It's just a, you know, a piece of plastic, roughly sewn, a typical tent pull bag. But, you know, what the heck? I can't complain. I opened it up and what do I see? A funky wire thing. I found it later on. This is the repair kit, it looks like, for the shock corded poles. Because all the poles I got, because I got the premium one, come shock corded. So it's got some wire cable inside of it. Keep there. The ties are just generic pieces of scrap canvas they have, which is standard across the world. They're going to go out and get a cool. You know, some decent fast tech buck pulls and fasteners to actually pull the poles together. I'll probably use them in that tent bag. Now I'll check, check that in the main canvas bag you'll see here in a bit. So I figured, yeah, what the heck. They just say scrap canvas or pieces of fabric, but, you know, fair enough. I mean, first time opening up, this is what you get, so I can't really complain. The bag is just a generic you know, plastic bag, nothing, nothing great, but yeah. what do you want? Uh, the poles that come in it, I didn't get all those wood square frame tents because it's got a pole frame kit for those guys, and they're 700 bucks, and they weigh 80 pounds. This thing has two poles. That one there I'm putting to the side is the front pole for your door, and then that one in front, the four-section jobby, that puppy is your main pole. So instead of having a frame, a big A-frame thing, which gives you more vertical walls, 
this has one pull and then one for the door and that's basically it so I kind of like that so after opening the second box up I got the bag the little repair kit thingy the ties the big pull and then my a-frame door pull and now you're looking at the bag the tent came in they just shipped it like that which is kind of bummer I mean they just sent it you know stuck with the little packing like that you're looking at it as I got it it would have been nice if they actually shrunk wrapped it up so it would have protected the bag from getting down I got some mud and dirt on already from shipping but eh, it's a bag for the tent it looks like it's well made so and there's a little pocket on it with the instructions that I just took out of there so you know we'll just unzip the bag and this thing's uh, the weight of the tent is heavy um, shipping weight was 92 pounds for everything so this gives you an idea this is not a backpacking tent <laughs> As you can see, it's the size of me, and I'm a big fat bastard, so, you know. It's not light, but I mean, I, so again, depending on what model you buy, you can get lighter fabric, heavier fabric. I've got the heaviest floor they make, and the heaviest fabric for the tent sides. So, that's what I wanted for durability, reliability to make it last, so that's what I bought. Forget about the heck, you know. Again, I'm just untying these pieces of spare fabric they give you just out of the factory. I'll go buy some, again, proper, you know, strapping and fast taking buckles to close it up and stuff. And the pouch on the side has the uh, instructions on how to, you know, set up and tear it down, which is kind of cool. Some good tips in it, too. Like, they talk about putting it away. When you put it away, put it away bone dry. That's to avoid mildew. I have anti-mildew coating on it, but, again, you know, just put it away bone dry. So that second bag is just the tent itself and what came in it. So I got the tent peg in a bag, the tent itself, the instructions, and then those pieces of cloth, and that's essentially it. So, again, what you see is what you get. So... There it is, the tent bag. Ultimate Protect. The packing slip on the outside, I haven't looked at yet. My instruction manual in the tent. And those little cheap ties. So that's what you got in that second pile. So we'll go from there. So, that's, what's this? Oh, instructions on how to set it up. That might be good, but you don't need them. I'll show you here as we go through the walkthrough and how to set it up. It's not that tough. So... That tape you see right there is a measuring tape. That's a 16-foot tape. Why? Because the tent, they say, is 16 feet 4 inches. So it's not small. Um, basically, they're saying you get 210 square feet. So it's it's huge. So there's plenty of room. So 16-foot tape just because that's you know, what we have here. So I grabbed it and we'll lay it out and give it a look. So I'm just going to let the run, video run the whole time. As you can see, real time. They said set up to tear down as one person is 15 minutes. That's about right. You know, by the time you get unpacked, it's it's fairly simple. The big challenge you're going to have in some parks is finding a 16-foot square hole to put it up in. So you know, and again, it's not it's not like a like I've got six tents right now: uh, car camping tents, backpacking tents, biking tents, everything. This is a huge tent for camping in a car. You know, backpacking, biking, and stuff like that. But so to find a pad that's going to be 60 feet in Canada. Could be tough. Otherwise, just, this is in my backyard. So, you know, again, field. What's that? Oh, a bag of pegs. Surprise, surprise. So, let's flip it open and you see. Again, this sucker is heavy because I got the extra heavy-duty flooring. It's the top-of-the-line floor they make. And it's the top-of-the-line canvas. So, upgraded from, I think, 285 canvas to 380, something like that. And the floor, instead of being 320, is 500 gram per square meter. So, it's heavy-duty stuff. But, I mean, I bought it kind of at a commercial level, just because I want it to last forever. And I, I abuse the heck out of my stuff, so, you know, what the heck. Uh, the tent itself I got out of Europe for, I bought it in Euros and had it come out of Belgium, or bought everything out of there, because it was cheaper than going to the U.S. and getting the exchange stuff. So the tent itself was 700 Euros. That funky little chandelier I got was 32 Euros. Uh... The stove mat was 37 euros, two coat racks for 8 euros each, and the stove jack I got, which is the exit one, they actually, we made a mistake on that one, they shipped the exit one, I need the actual 45 one, which you'll see, but I'll show you later on, they're going to ship me that one for free and I'll send it back to the other one, just to be nice. And then 128 euros for shipping, which is kind of weird, because I'm pretty sure the tank came out of the US, I'm not sure why it was 128 euros for shipping, but it worked out to be about 250 bucks cheaper buying it from Belgium on their site instead of going to the U.S. site. Because I called the U.S. guys and said, how much? They said, this much. So I said, okay. Did the math. So all in, uh, everything that came so far, I paid 970 euros. And my Visa credit card that I got 
Finally, my statement says here, I paid $1,483.10. So, we're going to call this a $1,500 package. That's what it cost me. So, that's from them to my place in Calgary, Canada. So, uh, again, this the, the poles, I'll show you, the pegs I'll show you here in a second. When they come, you get two sets of pegs, some light ones, and then some heavy duty ones. And again, this tent isn't the kind where you put the frame up, it's not self supporting. So, to set it up successfully, you're going to have to peg it out. Like, you know, it's ice or snow, c'est la vie. You got no choice. Because I can't see any decent way to erect the tent, but, you know, without putting down some pegs in the ground first. Even if you only did like four or six around the sides and then went from there and put it up, it's hard to say. Uh, extra heavy duty ropes and sliders and stuff like that, but, eh, you know. I'm not sure how that's better than their regular ones. I may swap the room up for some climbing cord to get some paracord in there to toughen it up. It's just your generic white cords. They're fairly thick and very, very heavy duty, but you know what the heck, and I'll shoot the camera. That's a 16 foot tape again. That's the size of the tent laid out. So that's, you know, 16 feet. If you don't believe me, I'll prove it. They actually say it's 16 feet 4 inches. So I mean, that because they've got the, uh, when you, once the tent's set up, you'll see that it's got what's called a bathtub floor. Instead of being just a flat, you know, bottom, and then you have your seams. These say actually curve up the sides, and it gives you basically a four inch wide seal of the extra heavy duty rubber on the ground. So if you had a puddle or water or something like that, it should theoretically flow underneath your tent and not into the tent because you've got this bathtub floor. Just Google bathtub floor in a tent. It's something you want in most tents. You know, you go to your cheapy car camp tent from Canadian Tire, it's not going to have that in water will get in your tent. This thing, I should be able to camp literally in water. You know, two to three inches of water splashing around in my boots. By the time I step into that bathtub floor, water should not come into it. That's the theory. So here's the other bag that came with it. That's the, the bag, the instructions that came with it on the side there in the bag. And there's again, another thing, not, not a great bag, but eh, who cares? It'll work for what I need. This is going to hold pegs. You get two kind of pegs. Um, what we've got here is the, they actually send you 15 of each peg. So you got 15 thin ones. And they fit into those thick bars. And the thin ones are what you actually put in the ground first. I'll show you that here in a bit in the video. And that's what holds the tent to the ground. Then those heavier duty ones are the what you actually put on the ropes to peg out the tent and hold it up. That's your 60 mile per hour wind support. If you use those thin ones, you're kind of nuts because they're going to rip all that crazy. And you don't need to. The, that, those little pegs just kind of hold the tent in place. You put your center pole in, and then once you, your center pole's up, it'll step by itself because those thin pegs are in. And then as you put up your sidewalls with, with your ropes and stuff, the big pegs hold it up. I know because that's the instructions that I actually read the instruction manual. Call me kooky. So here's the bathtub floor. You can see it's got a four inch rise around it. So you waltz up, shove a little thin peg through the hole, pull it so it's fairly snug, and drive it home. I have enough weight to push a, a planet together, so I just use my foot. So, I mean, they just, they're they are fairly w strong. Looks like they're pretty well-made seams. Like, it's not like it's going to go anywhere. So, I'll just back up and do another one. And you have uh, 13 of these holes you got to put in the ground. So, it's 13 all the way around. And just pull them so they're fairly snug and shove them in. And you do that all the way around the whole tent. I'm not going to show you until after I get it done. Because there's no point. But this is what that looks like. It's welded to the actual bottom top. And it's, again, it's, it's thick, heavy-duty flooring. Like, it's the toughest floor I've seen in the tent. And I've got some fairly up upscale tents. So, I mean, this thing, a ground sheet, I wouldn't worry. I don't think, I mean, sort of burning a hole. I mean, you cut it, you have to patch it, but a ground sheet wouldn't stall that anyway. This thing's some heavy duty. I hope those welding seams hold after a few years of use. I might look after my stuff. i got tents and sleeping bags that are 25 years old, and they're good so far. They look after my stuff, so pull it snug, shove it in. And again, without putting these guys in first, I don't know how you'd actually get the tent up. It seems like it'd be tough to try and put up without putting down the pegs first to hold it in shape. I just can't see how you do it. Maybe the canvas camp guys have an idea, but I'd be like, eh, flummoxed. But anyway, walk up and stroll around. The door has, you're missing one peg at the door. There isn't one. As you waltz around the tent and get busy and throw up, you'll see there's uh, nothing at the front door, like for a, a, the, you know, a peg hole. They just you walk around the tent and they're all there. There's 13 of them. So you get 13 of those small pegs, and again, ice, snow, good luck, you're not going to get any holding power, but, you know, in snow, maybe. It's, uh, they're just generic, they're fairly stiff wire pegs, they're not great, not bad. The, the heavy duty ones they give you are nice pegs, they're not going to go away. You can pound those in with a hammer. These guys are just your standard little, you know, crappy 
wire pegs, but you know. Short again, I can't see how else you'd get it up unless you pegged it out first because it's not that kind of tent. There's no frame to set up, it's one pole instead of hauling around those wood square frame tents. Now your sides in this thing are only two feet high as opposed to your four or six foot high sidewalls on a, on a you know, woods or backpacking tent, but I don't want to lug around a frame that's, you know, not going to fit in my car that weighs 80 pounds of the steel frame or the you know, wood frame or whatever you want to get. This has one pole. I like that better. I mean, it's rated to 60 miles per hour, so I'm not going to complain. So, I mean, once you get the pegs pegged out, set up your pole and put it in. They say the tent is a nine feet, eight feet, nine feet, eight inches high, sorry, but as you'll see here in a second, I got 10 feet out of that pole, so I'm not quite sure where they get that from, but, and because I bought the upgraded tent, I've got the outside canvas itself, which is the heavy duty ca canvas. I've also got the pre-sewn and pre, like, fixed in there wire mesh door. The lower models don't have that mesh all the way around or inside. I figured, yeah, I'm going to go for it. So I wanted, again, because I bought this, you know, the, the one right below the top, which is the next only thing higher is a coating. And I figured, what the hell? When I stick the tape on there, I got 10 feet. So that's with the suction cups and stuff on there, too, that are in your bracing to hold it. Well, I measured it. As you will see, I get 10 feet. So it's 10 foot high tent. So 10 feet high, 16 feet across. So that's it. So we'll go ahead and zip it shut. So yes, it is. I'm out of frame because I'm an idiot. I didn't look at my camera, but anyway, there it is. So now let's go inside the tent. And we'll go ahead and see if we can get that pole in there. There's a welded ring on there halfway up. I'm not sure what that's for. But I've got it set up where the sleeves are stacked into the... I mean, I'm not sure there's an upper down on the pole because it's the first time I had the tent out and set up. But I just put the ring that's on there up towards the top. For what purpose, I don't know. And then I have the poles butting in so that they're coming into the top down. And you just basically shove it in the top. There's a reinforced top on the tent where the panels all meet up. There's 14 panels in the tent. And stick your pole in. Again, this is where if you didn't have something anchored to the ground, I don't know how you get it to stay up. I think you have to put like at least four pegs in somewhere to get it, you know, get the pole in. At this point, it's it's up, and then you just have to basically put your side walls out, and away you go. So that's where you use your extra heavy duty pegs. Again, this is the first time, brand new to me out of the box, so you're seeing it as I'm seeing it now. There's some vent holes up on top. There's someone. They're permanently in the tent. There's no mesh in there, but that's okay. At least I don't think there is. I haven't looked yet. So I'll back a bit to get a better view, panoramic, so to speak. And we'll keep going. So the next thing I need are the heavy duty pegs that come with it. So I'm going to grab those pegs and go crazy. So then I grab this other set of poles, which is the A-frame door. So I got to walk in there and put that up first. They say you don't have to, but it, to me it makes more sense to put the A-frame door in before you put the pegs out. So I mean, I just said, what the hell. I'm walking in inside the tent, as you'll see later on. There's two little pockets in the floor, like the webbing loops that actually hold the poles in. And there's actually ties, so you can actually tie the uh, poles into the little pockets. There's ties everywhere in this thing, so it seems pretty good that way. I haven't looked that close yet. I'm going to sleep in it tonight, the day after I set it up, just to try it. Because the weekend's coming up, so what the heck. And again, the A-frame thing, you just shove the pole in. That's your front door support pole. So there's two poles, one for the main tent, one to hold the door open. This little rain cap that I didn't actually pull out to put on top, but I'll share it later as, as an accessory. You can see it too as well. And you put the poles in the pockets, and you're essentially done. And they say set up 15 minutes, and yeah, they can't be far off. I took longer as I'm videotaping it all to show you guys, but shove your poles in the pockets. Tie them down if you want to. I tied them, you know, so they're, the pole for the door is in there. It's in tied to the pocket, so it can't move around. And again, this is the first time out of the box for me I've ever set it up, ever looked at it, so it's kind of like, eh, okay. So it's all new to me too, so you're seeing what I'm seeing, so this is as good as it gets. So you're looking at 10 feet high and 16 feet across. So okay, pretty big. And the way to do it is just to grab the, the pole, I mean, you got your ropes tied on there permanently, they're not coming off, so... Just shove them in. I mean, don't, don't tension it up yet. Just put them out and pull out your sides. I mean, in grass, again, those pegs are going to go in tickety-boo. In something else like snow or ice or rock or something, you're going to drive them home because they're not going to go in as easily as, as on a grass surface. 
Same with some of the car camp pads they have in some Canada parks. You're going to need a hammer because <laughs> they're not going to go in otherwise. It's just, you know, some of the ground we have around here is rather rugged. And same for ice camping or snow. The way, again, the bottom, of, the bottom of my tent unzips completely so you don't have to actually put the tent up with the bottom on it. But again, it's, it'd be a real pain not to have some pegs out before you went and put it up. I just can't see how you'd do it. It'd be a real pain. At least four to get the tent up. Then you can put your pole in, then start pegging it out. But I don't know. It'd be weird. So you're seeing what I'm seeing. First time I had it, so. I'm just doing the opposite side of where the first rope was. Just because, you know, it seems like a thing to do. I suppose to go around from one at a side. Your mileage may vary, put it up however you want, but I'm just gonna, you know, do opposite sides and go go from there. And again, I'm just, you know, that's, as you see, as I get it more pegged out, you see the two foot sides on the bottom come up. So when you're inside the tent, you got the sloping wall over you. But again, you know, that's not, I don't think that's an issue. A wall tent, the only nice fact is you got four foot sides, so tenting, sitting beside it, you get more area that way. But I mean, this thing can sit, hell, 18 people comfortably at this thing with chairs. I mean, it's just massive inside. I'm going to show you later on sleeping bags and cots and chairs and tables in various configurations and the stoves. You can see how big it is. There's a guy out there called TP Diaries. He bought a tent. He's living in it right now in Sweden. But he bought a small tent. He is cramped. Like, I would want to stay in it for a year. It's it's tight. This thing, I mean, he's, yeah, you save wood heating your tent up. But uh, talk about snug, snug for space. He's got his dog with him and stuff. It's just, go watch it. It's, it's called TP Diaries. Google it. It's actually pretty cool. It's on YouTube and he's got... 12 episodes. I'm not going to do 12 episodes because he's way more ambitious than I am. So, this is a little bit larger than just a TP. And again, because, you know, again, I've got these pegs you rope out and that's what holds it up and it gives your, your wind protection. You've got two foot side walls, whereas his TP has no side walls. It's just got that slope as a TP top to bottom. This, I think, is more practical. It comes with four windows in it. And again, because I bought the model I did, there's permanent mesh sewn in the four windows. So you can leave the canvas sides on it, and I'll show you, like, once it's set up, you'll see the windows. I'm not opening them yet or anything. I'll do that in another video. Then the inside has an entire ring of mesh all the way around. So if you see these guys set up in, air, in you know, Arab countries or really, really hot climates like Caribbeans or glamping and overseas and the Dutch West Indies or someplace warm, you actually take the canvas sides down, and the whole bottom of it, instead of being solid canvas, would be this vented mesh. So again, for blow-through drafts and winds, that would be nice. And one thing about having these uh, pegs when you go out, you're going to want to peg them out with lots of rope just because that pulls up your sidewall and gives you that vertical sidewall that you're going to want to have. So, I mean, tents or trees, like I'm going to go up to the top of my fence here. So instead of having the ropes come down at an angle, I'm actually having them pull up so the wall will be more vertical. Again, you know, depending on how you set up out in the woods. With these ropes, I've got, you know, I, I'll peg it out to wherever I have to. I'll use trees as opposed to pegs just because they're a lot more solid and easier to do. And we've got... I don't camp out in prairie, bear, bald ass fields. I go out in the woods, so even the campsites around, I'll be able to find places to put up my ropes and put them up to trees as opposed to going to the ground. But otherwise, you're going to want to have, you know, with the ropes out, at least, well, heck, 25, 30 feet around of space to get these sidewalls out. But I should see if they come up fairly easily. You just peg them out and keep going, and it'll go up. So there's uh, 14 panels in the tent. All the way around, so there's 14 rope points. So you got 13 on, on the small ones, and then that front center one for your uh, pull for your door is the 14th. And you get 15 pegs of the small and 15 pegs of the large. So you get a couple, uh, looks like a spare of one and two spares of the little guys. And there you see, that's my side walls there. So you got two foot side walls with the, those windows, and that's it. But again, I like having one pull instead of a whole frame, so I figured what the heck. And again, whether you go to a fence, or to a tree or whatever, you know. Get her pegged out. As you can see, I'm not in any hurry either because this is the first time I set it up, so I'm just kind of looking at the tent, admiring it, playing with the ropes, looking at the cords and the quality. As you'll see, I'll show you some stitching videos in here and stuff. Like, again, it's, it's well made. There's no Chinese manufacturing quality here. It's really well, double seams, nice welded. Well, the stitching looks really, really good, so I can't complain. It looks like they did a really good job of it, so I'm not going to argue. 
and then as at the bottom because again where, where it connects here the door is that's where you can actually unzip the entire floor off the tent so I gotta spend a few minutes here bashing away that because it came a bit undone but that's where you actually if you want to unzip the entire floor like, see right now once it's up you know you got you got the ropes out and the center poles in I can literally unzip go around the whole bottom of the tent unzip that whole floor and yank it out because the center pulls up and you got some ropes on the side to hold it open you could basically have a floorless tent so again for winter camping if you're on snow or want to ice fish or something like that you could do that but again it would be challenging to get it up especially on a you know without having the some ropes out somewhere to hold up the first center pole so you know eh. but I mean if you want to pull the floor off in this model you can likewise I can change the sidewalls to being the solid canvas ones you'll see to a full mesh door all or full mesh walls all the way around or just my four windows so you know no complaints I like it gonna sleep in it say I'll, I'll give you a report I'm gonna show you videos later on of the size because all the videos I show they say here's the tent which I'm doing down there's the tent so you can watch eight videos on how to set it up big whoop you don't need eight videos on how to set it up but uh, I'm gonna show you the inside and, and the space inside the videos if you look on the site and go to the forums it shows you pictures in the gallery you can actually fit two queen beds in this thing and a twin bed so that gives you an idea of the space inside this thing 210 square meters it's big I'll just show you some sleeping bags on and off ma camp mats and I'll show you a couple of uh, you know like sleeping bags on cots and then a table or a camp kitchen and the stove and yada yada so you get an idea of you know what you're seeing because that's why I said I could have bought a two meter or I mean, sorry a three meter four meter five meter or six meter this is the five so it's you know basically 500 centimeters across or five meters or 16 feet the smaller one I went nah because you got you got a lot of space for those walls drooping down because you got those 45 degree angles on the walls so I wanted a little bit bigger for a standing up room in it so if you had you know six people or six people in here drinking beers you could all stand up or sit down on your chairs and it wouldn't be an issue the f four meter would be a little smaller six is massive I don't know where you'd find a spot to put it up like you'd need a small planet but once you get all picked out I'll walk you around and tension it up after this you'll show you here the next cut that you know I waltzed around tension it up and it seems to be happy and I put the chandelier and stuff in later on I'll show you that stuff afterwards too once I get the, go through the interior and usability of the tent as opposed to just a setup video but yeah it's big <laughs> and it's gonna be warm once I get my tent put in there get the stove put in the tent stove check and it's gonna be awesome so there's the ropes extra heavy duty there you know that's upgraded to game what they say and there's the canvas camp logo very pretty and as you see that's the bathtub floor so if I want to take that floor off it unzips from right there and you have no floor in the tent so how do you keep the tent attached down to the ground you know once you unzip that floor if you took the floor off those white loops loop down through each of those skinny pegs so that would come out the bottom one there and that white loop would go through those wire pegs and that's what would hold the tent in place I think you'd be almost better off putting it up with the floor in than removing the floor on your own time. And as you can see, the stitching quality looks great. Now, see, you'll see the inside walls, but I'll show you the you know, option to change the walls over. There's lots of woggles and stuff for rolling up the walls and sides and stuff. I haven't figured out all of them all. There's a, multi, there's a facet, multi faceted loops inside it that I can't figure out what, what ties what up or down. I'll have to call Canvas Camp and say, how the hell does this thing go together? But again, if you're going to peg it out, see how it's more upright with the tree there as opposed to going down the ground. So, again, you know, there's your two foot high walls. These pegs go to the ground, and that last one there goes up to the side of the house. So, again, it just seems to be a better, better fit the way to hold it on. Again, I can probably undoing those. So I was walking around the door, I'd probably just undo those and let them flop over. And here's the inside. It's big. And again, your sidewall sloped down, so you got a lot for your walking room. There's some bits from it being brand new out of the box, as you saw, so I haven't cleaned it up yet, but that's okay. The next videos I'll have, I'll get some stuff inside it and show you the chandelier and the usability and what actually fits in it, because setups are breeze. It's what can you fit in this sucker? And to me, it looks like a lot, so we'll go from there. And then the next video I'll do here in a few days and edit it up, and you'll see what it looks like. Other than that, thanks for watching. We'll uh, get some more videos going here once I get motivated. After I get it all cleaned up and get it all pretty.
So thanks for looking at it. We'll talk to you guys later.